All right, so this is our second week of the urinary system. We've learned some basic anatomy of the urinary system and the kidney specifically. And we've talked about an overview of the three processes that occur in the nephron. So the first one is filtration. And that we talked about in detail last week. Um, this week is going to be about what happens in the rest of the nephron. So we've got the proximal convoluted tubule, the loop of Henle and the distal convoluted tubule oh, please, are all part of the nephron. Then we've got the collecting duct, which is connected to the nephron. Um, each of those is going to, um, reabsorption and secretion are going to occur in each of these locations. Reabsorption, secretion. This is going to change the composition of our filtrate to ultimately produce urine, our concentrated urine is going to be waste, such as urea, and other waste. Um, and then variable amounts of water and sodium and other compounds. To get there, it's a complicated process. Um, so this week will be each of those components. We will introduce the idea of regulation of Primarily, the DCT is regulated by aldosterone, which you know about. And then the collecting duct, um, water reabsorption specifically, is regulated by antidiuretic hormone. We will see these this week when we look at these places. Um, but then next week is going to be all about fluid and electrolyte balance, which is really what we've been talking about already, but um, kind of from an integrative approach, and we'll look at aldosterone and ADH and some other hormones, um, again, more and more integrated. Okay, so that's this week. One last thing will also be um, this urine, right, is going to come out the collecting duct, um, combine into calyces, and then the renal pelvis, then out the ureter. I want to talk about um, the process of urination at the end of this week. So the um, sphincters and muscles involved in urination itself.